Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Asher User Group Sweden. Hi, Hokan. Hello. Hi, Jona. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Happy Easter to you. It's uh, yes. Easter holiday for us uh, here in the Nordics, uh, <laughs> at least. Yes. Uh, how are you doing Easter. today? It's been very re relaxing Easter here. So I just want great. to wish everyone who celebrates Easter also happy Easter wherever, wherever yes. they are. Yes, and everyone in Sweden uh, got actually like extended, uh, extended weekend because Friday is a red day, and then the weekends mm -hmm. plus Monday uh, as oh, well. Okay. I think it's the same for uh, mm, yes. Oslo, Norway, right? Uh, plus yes. uh, Thursday. Mm. Plus Thursday too. Yes. Yeah, mm. So good, good. That's a lot. Uh, that's a lot of <laughs> weekends. <laughs> yes, and it's a good weather. So uh, in my area, at least, uh, it's starting to melt some snow. Mm. So I hope it will be spring uh, mm. very soon. Yeah. So uh, before we get started, uh, especially to those that are new uh, tuning into us, I would like to take or we would like to take our opportunity to uh, share about ourselves. So I will start by sharing uh, about Hokan, who is Hokan Silvernagel, who is my community leader of Azure User Group uh, Sweden. So Hokan is a manager uh, for big data and AI at Miles uh, in Oslo. And he is a Microsoft AI MVP. He is very active in the community uh for a norwegian.net user group uh he also co-lead a community or an ai school called ai42 and he is an ambassador of oslo ai uh in the community and aside from that uh hokan is a microsoft certified trainer uh international public speaker so you will see him everywhere in many conferences as well and yes, that's Hokan, and I'm very honored to have him uh, lead this community with me bi-weekly, all the time. <laughs> thank you so much for being here, Hokan. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Jonah. So I'm also very happy and very proud to present Jonah Anderson, who is the founder of our user group. She is also an MVP, a Microsoft Azure MVP, and in addition, she is a Microsoft Certified Trainer. She is also a mentor, a public speaker, and a, a podcast host. And she works as a cloud and DevOps engineer, and she's also writing a book on O'Reilly. Uh, what yes. is that book about? Yeah, it's uh, it's all about Azure. <laughs> I mean, oh. it's about learning. <laughs> uh, the about book is that entitled Learning Microsoft Azure. And it's more focused on uh, the fundamentals developers need to know uh, in terms of cloud computing and developing uh, with Azure. So. I'm writing the final chapters of that, so I'm very ac excited and looking forward when it is being published uh, very soon this year. So yeah, I'm excited. Oh. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so it's the show is not about us, <laughs> but it's about uh, our uh, our community, and we're, it, this month is very special because. Our our speakers are our community members, and uh, that's uh, that one of them is joining us today. But before we start, I would like to share uh, the learner badger uh, uh, that we have for today's session. So, if you want to learn about Azure automation, please feel free to follow uh, or go to the Bitlin link that we're uh, sharing, Azure uh, Sweden underscore Azure Automation. And please uh, grab your phone and scan this uh, Azure Heroes Learner Badger to claim it on your uh, wallet. And we will also be having a FICA session later, and we will share the Zoom link uh, for you. And uh, before we get started, we in the community follow uh, a code of conduct. Uh, so Azure User Group Sweden inspects, expects everyone to be uh, nice and friendly, uh, respectful to others, and seek to understand and not criticize. Uh, be curious and open to share your ideas in chat or even in our Zoom meetings. Be inclusive in your comments and questions anytime. And if you have, uh, feedback about our code of conduct, feel free to visit this link or reach out to me and uh, Hokan on uh, LinkedIn. Okay. Yes. 
Yes, so then um, time has come here to introduce yes. our speaker. So we're very happy here to be able to introduce um, Said, who is one of our community members. Uh, so that's a special um, special theme here for April month that we have. We will have some of our community members uh, coming here to present. So, so welcome to you, uh, Said. Hey, hey, how are you guys? Yes, we're, we're... <laughs> great. <laughs> I yeah. like when you said, hey, hey, like a typical <laughs> Swedish, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, now, now I'm kind of combination of Swedish, English, Persian. Yes, so Svenska. <laughs> yeah, so yes. let, let me ask you a little bit more formal introduction here. So Said works as a solution architect at WeSafe, and he has over 14 years of experience in the technology field. And he has a very strong focus on Microsoft solutions for the past eight years. And that has led him to become a certified Microsoft Azure Solution Architect and also Azure Network Engineer. And he specializing in integration, integration and automation solution on Azure. And he's also an expert in PowerShell and has built over 50 automation and integration solution using that tool. And has a strong passion for DevOps, infrastructure as code, and also in relation here to Azure. And to say this is a true Microsoft enthusiast and is always exploring new ways to utilize the platform to create cutting edge solutions. Yes, thank welcome. So <laughs> yeah, welcome. Yeah, it was too much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's really good to hear these things from legends like, uh, like you guys. And yeah, much appreciate that. Yes, thank you for like sharing, uh, joining us virtually today and to share your knowledge. And it's interesting to hear that we have a PowerShell guru on stage, virtual stage uh, today. Yeah, so, so today you will be speaking about Azure Automation. Yeah, yes. yeah. So it's exciting. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's a good opportunity to talk about the Azure Automation, one of the uh, most, uh, you know, uh, perfect solution or services of uh, Azure that uh, might or might not you heard about that, but it, it's a really good solution that you can handle your automation and automated solution that you are going to implement in your environment. Mm -hmm. So it's a good opportunity for me to share my knowledge in this regard and hope uh, everyone likes it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, are you ready to yeah. wrap the virtual stage? Sure. Shall we start? Yes, it looks like you're excited. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, bring up your presentation here. And Hokan and I will be on backstage. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Hello to all of you guys that are watching us. So uh, today I'm going to explain some part of the Azure automation and the features that you can use for automating your process in your organization. So. As normal, I will start with this part. Uh, Hokan already uh, somehow explained it, uh, who I am. But yeah, so I'm here to explain uh, the Azure automation part. And I'm really uh, honored that be a part of this community. And I got this opportunity to share my knowledge regarding the Azure automation with you audience. So for agenda. Uh, today, we are going to cover these uh, subjects for Azure Automation, setting up an Azure account, uh, process automations, shared resources, DSC inventory changing tracking, update management, DevOps, and some security best practices. And at the end of the session, I'm here to answer your questions. So let's start. What is a, a, an Azure Automation? So Azure Automation is a cloud-based solution that allows user to create and manage workflow called Runbook. It provides a way to automate uh, various IT process from simple administrative tasks to complex workflow that involve multiple systems and services. Azure Automation also integrates with other services such as Monitor, Azure Active Directory, and some Power Platform solutions too and in making uh, easy to manage and automate tasks uh, across multiple services. Additionally, it provides a way to manage uh, and automate on-premises resources, uh, making it perfect tool for IT automations. 
by using uh, Azure Automation, organizations uh, can improve uh, operational efficiency and reduce human errors by automating routing tasks and process. It provides features uh, such as error handling, resource management, ensuring that automated tasks are execute, uh, executed uh, reliable and accurate. Uh, accurate. So, the first step of Azure Automation is having an Azure Automation account. So by having Azure Automation account, you have access to different part of the Azure Automation. So it's part of the resource, uh, shared resource, auto, uh, process automation for DevOps, for change tracking and inventory, desired asset configuration or DSC, and also the update management. So. The first step is creating an Azure Automation account. So in this demo, you can see, you can easily navigate to Azure portal, create a resource called Azure Automation, define uh, the subscription, create the resource group that you want. And also you can name your Azure Automation and the region that you uh, want to have this resource. So next, uh, you can define it's its system assigned or user assigned, if it's public or end, uh, private endpoint that you need. And it's basically for the security reason. If you need to have uh, basically uh, direct connection to your Azure automation or if it's the public endpoint that you want to define. Uh, beside that, you have the option to create your Azure Automation account by PowerShell or Azure CLI or ARM template. So after you have created that Azure Automation account, now we are going to talk about the first item, the process automation. So in process automation, we have different uh, items, runbook, jobs, hybrid worker groups, and watcher tasks. So in general, uh, Runbook is a documented set of procedure or instructions that describe how to perform or a specified uh, task or process. In the context of the IT automation, a Runbook is a collection of scripts or procedure that automate the specific IT process or task. Runbook can be used to automate a wide range of tasks from uh, simple tasks uh, or to uh, even complex workflows that involve multiple systems or services. Uh, for example, a runbook might automate the process of provisioning a new virtual machine in a cloud environment, or it might automate the process of uh, scaling up or down, up or down uh, a web application based on usage patterns. So in the Runbook, we have different, uh, different options to uh, implement. We have different type of Runbook. So we have PowerShell, we have Python, we have uh, PowerShell workflow or graphical workflow. So maybe you think what is the difference between PowerShell or PowerShell workflow? So PowerShell workflow are, uh, workflows are type of the PowerShell script that provide a way to create long running parallel and fault tolerant workflow using a declarative syntax. So PowerShell workflows are designed to support automation um, scenarios that require uh, coordination of multiple tasks uh, or actions, and they can run on local or remote systems. PowerShell workflows allow you to define a sequence of tasks uh, with each task running independently or in parallel. So you have these different type of the workflow or PowerShell method that you can uh, implement in Azure Automation. Uh, but one more thing that I need to mention, if you use graphical PowerShell instead of normal PowerShell method. So you have to think about that using the graphical version of uh, Azure Automation may result in a slower performance compared to the uh, standard one. Because uh, when you use a graphical, and the backend needs to be compiled from graphical to code. Also, 
In Rombook, you can use a uh, Rombook gallery. So in the Rombook part, you have this option to find your specific uh, codes by searching in the Rombook gallery and find the predefined the codes or uh, Rombooks that you are looking for. And these uh, Rombooks uh, are created by Microsoft or individual person. You just, maybe you need to uh, actually refactor or some part of this code to be fit for your organization. So in Rombook, you have more options to uh, use. And also, it, it, but, uh, not only you can use automation uh, for the code, but also you have this option to run uh, your script manually. And also maybe you can use a schedule task for your code to be run in a specific time. But uh, please note that uh, the limitation is from one hour to more. So uh, the uh, limit hours that you can use uh, for the schedule part is the uh, at least one hour. Uh, the other cool feature that you can use in Azure Automation is webhook. So for do, those who have no idea what is the webhooks, basically it's a URL that you can define for your uh, Azure Automation and your webhook. And you can use that webhook to, uh, webhook to trigger your uh, script or your automation or your runbook. And also you can push uh, the the, the specific parameters that you want to use in your uh, script. So it's a really cool feature if you want to integrate uh, your runbook with the other systems. Uh, other than that, you have job monitoring and log and tra tracing. So basically, by these two feature you can, features, you can uh, monitor your runbooks if it's fake, if it's suspended, and the reason of that. Also in uh, runbook, you have this uh, option to integrate with uh, Logic Apps, Power Automate, and even Power, uh, Power Platform, uh, Power, Power Apps too. So you can use the predefined or built-in action in the uh, this Power Platform to uh, services to integrate uh, with your runbook, and you can create a kind of solid uh, integration between them. The other part is jobs, so you can uh, either control or monitor each runbook individually, or you can see a list of the runbooks that you have and also the jobs that uh, successful or completed uh, past time. So you can easily check the outputs, error or warnings for each individual code uh, or runbook that you have in the Azure Automation. The other part is hybrid worker groups. So hybrid worker groups, it can be one VM virtual machine or more than one virtual machine in a group uh, that you can push your code uh, to those machines and uh, make sure that these codes are uh, running on those machines. So basically you can use uh, this uh, hybrid worker group to um, they basically run the codes uh, on your specific VMs or machines that you want. And the good item, the, the good uh, feature that you have here is uh, it's not necessary if you want to move uh, the, the code inside your on-premise environment because uh, you can easily use Azure Arc feature to run your code on on-premise uh, uh, machines that you have and uh, it can help you to uh, define a kind of direct connection to your systems in the backend. So it's really good and fit for long running script. And uh, you can use that for uh, big uh, automation in Azure automation. And also it's possible to use that for uh, either Windows or Linux, but for Linux, you have to make sure if you are, you are using the PowerShell, you need to have PowerShell core on your Linux VM. Uh, in hybrid worker group, you maybe you need to uh, think about that if you really need to have a hybrid worker group or you can use uh, Azure Sandbox. So Azure Sandbox is a VM that's connected to uh, Azure Automation backend. And when you run a code in Azure Automation, you use that shared resources in the Azure Automation backend. 
But in some cases, you cannot use Azure Sandbox. You need to have different VM in the hybrid worker group to run that code. So for example, if you want to uh, run a code for services in the Azure, uh, it's better to have it in Azure Sandbox because authentication is more simpler than the others. Uh, the latency of a script resources is uh, basically better than the uh, hybrid worker group in some cases and also minimizing the operation cost because if you want to have hybrid worker group of course you have to have an uh, a vm or if it's azure arc you have to consider about the azure arc uh, actions in the uh, cost wise uh, but if you have a long running script uh, you need to use a hybrid worker group because uh, there is a fair uh, shared in Azure Sandbox. So uh, it's not optimized for long running a script and you need to use uh, VMs or uh, hybrid worker groups. Also, if you use uh, specific modules or if you have uh, no limitation on resources and, uh, or if you need to use the uh, WMI uh, scripts to elevate, uh, elevation some access on your script. So basically you have to consider uh, which method is the best uh, for you. The other option that we have here is watcher tasks. So basically watcher task, it's a kind of, uh, it's consists of two different scripts that you can have in Runbook. One is, for watching and the other four is the trigger. So watch your task uh, based on the uh, script that you have in Runbook and uh, watch the uh, events that you define that. For example, you have a folder that you can that you want to uh, watch this folder if a new file has been added and then uh, it, uh, the Runbook needs to be in, uh, triggered. So watch your task uh, doing the same, checking specific items in the uh, runbook that you have to define and also three gears based on the parameters and actions that you have in the watcher task in the frequency uh, that you define, for example, every minute. Uh, Microsoft suggested that you use uh, logic apps for this option. I recommended that too. Uh, because it's more flexible and you can use gateways to watch this uh, different uh, method to get uh, basically the parameters and data. So let's have a demo to see how we can create a ROM book. So here uh, we have uh, Azure Automation uh, name uh, the uh, ROM book. I uh, selected PowerShell 5.1. And it's easy. So the ROM book is created. Now I have the ROM book here. Uh, I have a code, which is a simple code, just getting information from uh, Azure AD. And as an, uh, as an output, it shows us uh, the number of users that I have in my Azure Active Directory. So here we have the test pane. So you can see the result of the code before you publish your code and uh, if it's need to be tuned or updated. So as you can see in the output, I have the number of the direct users that I have in the uh, directory. So then I can publish the code and I have this option to run the code uh, manually here too. So as soon as you publish the code, you have the access to run it and uh, check it. So in the status, you have a different type of the status uh, queued uh, or running, and when it's done, you can see it's complete, or if it's failed, or if it's uh, basically suspended. Also, you can see any errors or warning, and basically you can uh, check and track uh, if there was uh, any problem in your code. And uh, you can also check the jobs here. So as you can see, I had two jobs here and I can easily track them. And also in the jobs, I can see other uh, Rombox status and jobs that uh, I had in Rombox. So another good option that we have in Azure Automation is Webhook, as I've said. So in Webhook, uh, in the Rombox, so I'm going to 
create a webhook. The webhook is a specific URL for your runbook. So uh, you have to name and you also you can set expiration time for your own book. And please note that you have to copy and paste uh, this uh, URL in somewhere that is secure. And also uh, you cannot uh, see this uh, webhook URL again because it's one time generated. And when it's ready, so you can a uh, webhook URL to call the automation. So but what we can do, we can uh, parameterize your uh, basically automation. So here uh, I have created some more options here. So as you can see, I have a parameter in first line and also I can uh, call the webhook and uh, get information from the uh, webhook, like the parameters that are uh, inside the webhook. And at the end of the code, I have a if condition. If the webhook is, uh, if, if the atom, uh, automation is uh, run with uh, manual or scheduled task, or if it's a kind of trigger started by the webhook. So here, this is the if condition that we have here. And when I publish the code, and started manually, I will receive the uh, normal uh, output, which is basically for the normal uh, goal that I have, as you can see. And also, now I have the uh, Rambo URL. So in this test, uh, actually, I used uh, Postman to push this code to uh, my automation account and uh, runbook to trigger my uh, runbook. So as you can see, it's a post action uh, with the runbook uh, URL and the parameter that I'm going to send by JSON format to uh, webhook runbook. So as you can see, I, uh, I have a parameter name with value Azure user group Sweden and when I press send, I'm back to Azure Automation. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can see the job uh, ID because you can track the job ID here with uh, Azure Automation PowerShell. So the trigger is a start and now it's running. And when it's done, I can see the output, which is related to uh, triggered by uh, webhook. So this is the part of the code. And also the webhook uh, data that I can see, it's include the parameter and actually the, the value of the parameter. So this is the use case of the uh, uh, webhook. So let's go for the next part, which called shared resources. So basically shared resources or uh, is about the all of resources that you have in Azure Automation. And you like to define it one time and use it on different resources. So in shared resources, we have different parts. Uh, the schedule task, so you can define one schedule task, uh, as I said before, one hour and more, and link it to different run books. Also, you have the modules. So you can have a module center for all of your webhooks, uh, sorry, uh, runbooks, and you can use that. But please note that this module center or uh, module place is only for the cloud and Azure sandbox. So if you need to run the scripts on your Azure hybrid worker group, uh, you need to install the modules uh, separately on the VM. So if you have like three VMs on your Azure worker groups, so you have to think that you need to install modules uh, on each different VMs in the groups. So uh, you can uh, use this uh, shared resources for the uh, modules. Uh, in different version like 5.1, 7, the preview version, I guess it's 7.2 now. And you can use it for diff different scenarios. And also you can uh, 
upload your specific module if, if you need that. If you use a Python type of the runbook, so basically you can upload the packages here and uh, it, uh, the support the version uh, 2712 uh, and 3.8. And it's the option that you have basically to upload up to 100 megs of the package to be able to run on, on the Azure Sandbox. So also you have the credentials. So instead of having your credentials uh, in clear text or, or in other ways, you can easily store your credentials in the Azure Automation Credentials Shared Resources, and you can reuse it in different ROM books. Same for connections. And you can uh, basically use uh, your connections in secure way. Uh, for example, you can define service uh, Azure Service Principle here and uh, easily use it in your code without exposing the uh, actually the, uh, the the information of the Service Principle application that you have. You have the option to uh, have a shared resources based on certain uh, certification. You can easily upload the certification or PFX file directly to Azure Automation, and you can use it in different runbooks. And also for variables, you can define different variables like uh, string boolean, data, date and time, integer, or even secure string by enabling the encrypted uh, items on the string. So, uh, it uh, cannot be able to see it easily or in clear text uh, in the uh, Azure Automation. So now let's have another recorded demo here. Here, I'm going to uh, define the uh, basically uh, demo for uh, demo credential here. And uh, I'm going to add passwords of the principal app that I have, and also the user ID or username. And uh, before that, I have created another variable, a secure variable here, uh, and added here. So in the in the wrong book, I, in the old wrong book that I have, I'm going to define that uh, credential. So I easily add it into uh my code and add it as a variable so then i don't need to have this part of the code anymore because i already have the credential in one place so i'm going to add the tenant id2 as a secure variable and it's super easy just need to uh, basically define that and then use it in uh, your code so if I run the code again, you can see it's easily uh, use that uh, variables and credentials to be authenticated and used for the scripts. So that's how we can use uh, shared resources in our environment. Next part of our Azure, Azure automation is the desired state configuration. So I was thinking that instead of explaining desired state configuration in a technical way, I can use a kind of uh, example for that, a general example for that. So imagine that you have a messy roommate who always leaves the kitchen uh, like a mess. So it makes you like this, so much angry. And one day you decided to enough is enough and uh, create a set of rules of the for the kitchen, such as dishes must be washed and put away immediately after use and, and counter troops must be wiped down after cooking. You also make a checklist for your roommate to follow which includes of all of these rules. Now, every time uh, your roommate uses the kitchen, 
they have to follow uh, the rules and checks uh, of the items on the checklist. If they forgot to do something, the checklist reminds them to do it over time. Your roommate learns to follow the rules automatically and the kitchen stay clean and tidy. This is similar to how Azure desired state configuration works. You define a rules and settings for your infrastructure, such as virtual machine must have a specific uh, software install and network setting must be configured in certain way. Then use uh, Azure uh, DSC to enforce uh, these rules and ensure that your infrastructure stay in desired state. Just like with the kitchen example, Azure DSC helps to keep your infrastructure clean and tidy and make it easier to manage and maintain over the time. So in DSC or Azure uh, desired state configuration, you have a different uh, way basically to, uh, as a use case actually, so you can configure, uh, create a configuration different detection, the de uh, drift detection. So you can make sure everything is fine by your VM or if it's need to be uh, correct. For example, if you need to define a specific uh, VM uh, virtual machine name on your uh, machines, or if you want to make sure that you have a specific package on your VM, uh, so you can easily and create this configuration and assign it to the machine. And DSC will check uh, based on the time duration and make sure that everything is fine or if it needs to be correct. Also for the configuration compliance, you can easily define this kind of compliance rule for your uh, environment. Or if you need to install the application and make sure those applications are always available, so we can define that, or you can use for disaster recovery to make sure that uh, the VMs are uh, following the rules that you are looking for the disaster recovery and so on. Or even you can use for infrastructure as code. So uh, for example, for AVD infrastructure as code, you can make sure that uh, domain join will be happened by DSC. You just need to define a DSC option for your VM to push the code and make sure that VM will be joined to the domain after the creation. So in this demo, we are going to use a DSC. So in Azure Automation, I'm going to add a new VM so by connecting the VM, an agent will be uh, installed. As you can see, configuration method is different here. So I have an uh, option to apply and monitor, apply only, or apply and autocorrect. So for the last one, so if it's uh, applied, if it's changed, uh, the autocorrection will work and correct the configuration that I'm looking for. So here I selected the autocorrect and if it's necessary to reboot, I set it that. For example, if you are going to install some specific feature or rules. And now uh, the machine is connected and uh, basically it's compliant. So next option is you can use gallery to use a specific uh, configuration. For example, here I, uh, I can see the domain controller config to make sure that uh, VMs uh, are joining to the VM, uh, sorry, the domain, or I can use uh, IIS configuration uh, to install and configure the IIS automatically. But in this case, I'm going to create another configuration, it's a customized configuration. So uh, here, I'm adding this config file, uh, which is installing uh, the web server IIS with some specific uh, settings. Uh, I named the, this configuration with same name of the configuration name file. And now the file is added, but it's not compiled yet. So I need to compile the file. So I open it and press the compile. So what will be happen here? 
at the back end, uh, we have the kind of file called manage object format, uh, which is generated by DSC compiler, which converts the DSC configuration script into a binary file that can be interpreted by the DSC engine on the target node. The MOF file uh, contains information uh, such as the configuration settings, the resources to be used, and any dependency between the resources. So it's still not compiled. And as you can see, it's in queue. And now it's starting. And we need to see that it's compiled uh, successfully. So when it's compiled, and uh, you can see uh, some more information about the file that is compiled. And as you can see, it's compiled now, completed. And if I open, I can see if there is any log, any error or warning that I need to fix if it's failed or if it's suspended. So now the compiled configuration count is one, which means it's compiled and need, uh, ready to use. So I back to the nodes, select the VM, and assign node configuration. So I selected the uh, configuration file, then OK, and just waiting. So if I refresh here, as we can see, the confirmation status is pending. And after a while, and also if you can check, uh, if, you, uh, if you can see the IIS is not installed on my test VM. So here I refresh the items and it's known in progresses. And after a while, it can be successful. As you can see, if it's not successful, you can easily track down what is the problem. And also, if it's successful, you can see which components are services uh, compliant by this configuration. So if we back to a demo machine, you can see the IES has been installed with all of features that I have been defined in the configuration file. So that's all about the desired state configuration. The other part is inventory and change tracking. So uh, Azure Automation push the configuration based on the agent to the VM to be installed. And the AMA, Azure Monitor Agent, uh, sends the information to Log Analytics. And Azure Automation use that Log Analytics to show you uh, what kind of information or what kind of data you need to see. And also you can set the alerts. So you can easily set different alerts for uh, your configuration. So as you can see in the inventory part, you can easily see what kind of applications is uh, or installed on your VM. How many softwares do you have and how many groups you have or how many machines do you have in your groups? And as you can see, for example, in this uh, slide, you can see uh, the Google Chrome has been installed in uh, which version and who is the publisher, some more information. And also in the change tracking, you can see uh, what was the last change on, change on different uh, uh, resources, applications, or the files. So here I can see the Chrome has been installed on that time. And also Visual Studio has been removed on a specific time. And at the end, I can use the alerts to uh, get some more information if it's necessary by the configuration and settings that we have defined for different alerts. <laughs> so update management. Update management is a powerful, config, uh, powerful configuration component of uh, automation that helps keep your Windows or Linux uh, computers up to date, uh, both in Azure and on-premise. By, uh, by regularly scanning uh, machines and sending assessment uh, information about missing updates to the log analytics workspace. Update management ensure that your systems are always patched and protect against uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, 
with update management, you can uh, create schedule for automatic deployment of the missing updates, saving your time and effort that would be otherwise be spent on manual updates. This helps to ensures, um, ensure that you, your system remain compliant with regulatory, uh, regulatory uh, requirement and security uh, standards reducing your risk of uh, cyber attacks and a data breach. So update management uh, supports the operation, different operation systems. Uh, this, is the this is directly from Microsoft page. It's pretty update, so you can use update management for uh, those versions of Linux or Windows. So how to enable update management? You have several options to do that. You can use ARM template, but uh, please note if you want to enable by ARM template, you have to make sure about like analytics, Azure automation first, then you can use ARM template uh, basically to update and to create the update management. Also, you can use Azure portal uh, in this in this screen, you can see update management center preview that Microsoft uh, basically uh, announced it. Uh, instead of using Azure automation update management the old fashioned way, now you can use update management center, which is preview for now, uh, but uh, is a powerful uh, portal that you can uh, basically use uh, and see what updates are missing on which machines and you can define different policies. Or even you can use uh, virtual machine settings, just navigate to virtual machine, search for updates, and you can see it here. You can easily uh, see which updates are missing or if you need to add a VM into the uh, Azure uh, update management. Or with automation accounts, inside the Azure automation account, you can easily find the update management and add VMs or non-Azure VMs. Uh, machines, so you can use uh, easily uh, Azure Arc or other features like uh, onboarding that VMs to the uh, automation uh, update management. The other part is uh, using Runbook, so you can use uh, if you navigate to uh, browser gallery and browse gallery in Runbook, so you can find onboard Azure VMs to update and change tracking at a scale which is a, a good script or run book that you can use to onboard uh, your VMs to uh, update management by the onboard, uh, sorry, run book. So this is a demo how we can uh, onboard a machine into update management. So uh, basically you can see what kind of uh, updates are missed, but to adding Azure VMs, you can easily add Azure VMs based on the subscription, location, or different resource group, if it's possible. If, uh, so if the VMs is, is accessible to add to uh, update management. And also you can define different uh, deployment for the schedule time. So I can set uh, groups for that based on subscription, resource groups, and as you can see, based on this subscription, I can see the preview of the VMs that are included and the resource group, or if you can define specific tags for uh, your VM to be part of the uh, update management groups. Also, you can add uh, VMs directly. So basic, basic on, uh, base, uh, based on the uh, uh, agent that you already have. I can see which VMs, for example, here, I can see the VMs that I have. I selected in the group and this option, this configuration is only applied for that VM. So I have several options to uh, for the update classification. In this case, I ignore the service and tools. So uh, also, I can include or exclude uh, specific KB or updates uh, for the uh, schedule test. And uh, I can define the time recursing. So here I define like every two weeks, uh, Wednesdays, uh, the update assigned or the, 
the update management start uh, checking and updating the VMs. So if, if I need to uh, use uh, post or pre scripts for the uh, automation, I can use that. And also I can use the maintenance window time. And uh, one thing that I need to mention about the maintenance time, if you define 120 minutes for the maintenance time, please note that the last 20 minutes, it's only for restarting the VMs. So if you have some updates that it takes more than 120 minutes, uh, it will be updated or installed or downloaded during that 100 minutes. And the last 20 minutes, it's for restarting. And remaining updates will be wait for the next uh, maintenance window. So here, I just defined the uh, schedule. And I can see the deployment schedules here for all of VMs. Also, if we go to Update Center Preview, I can see a better view of the updates that I have for uh, each machine or if some specific update is missing. The other option that you have is one-time update. So if you need to push an update immediately, you can easily select the VM and push one update uh, to the VM. So I can see which updates are missing uh, on this VM. So I also, I can select uh, if there is any critical updates that I need to be installed. But <clears throat> for this option, for this time, I selected all of updates that I need to be installed on VMs uh, if required. And also you, here, you can also define the maintenance window for uh, updates. So when it's installed, uh, a new signal will be sent to a VM. And after a while, you can see the uh, updates are installed. And you can get some more information inside the VM side, too. So we can see history of the uh, updates that has been installed. For example, if it's security update, it's what uh, if it was a normal update. So it was all about update management part. So next part is the Azure DevOps. So the Azure DevOps is the, I think, interesting part of the Azure automation. I love it. Azure automation provides source control integration that allows you to uh, synchronize your RAM book with your uh, source controller uh, repository with this feature you can keep your automation account up to date with the latest version of your script stored in your GitHub or DevOps repository. Source control uh, integration simplifies the process of uh, promoting code uh, changes from deployment to production. You can easily uh, synchronize your automation account with different branches in your source controller uh, repository, make it easy to move uh, tested code to your production environment. In addition to promoting code change, source controller integration provides a collaboration feature that enable you to track change changes made by different members of your team. You can also roll back to early version of your run books if necessary, helping to ensure that your automation uh, environment remains stable and reliable. So one thing that you have to make sure about that when you want to create that connection between uh, Azure automation and the repository, uh, you have to make sure that the path or personal access token permission is enabled in your environment because this connection works with the path or personal access token. In Azure DevOps, uh, also you can use organizational settings and enable the token access in entire uh, of your organization settings. So here I was thinking to have a complete demo for uh, all of aspects of the Azure automation that we can have. So, uh, I've created this diagram and I've created this demo 
based on different part of the Azure automation. And also I use Azure Arc. I'm not going to explain Azure Arc for now uh, because it's not part of this uh, session, but we are using Azure Arc machine in the Azure automation to run a, work, a run book inside the on-premise VM. And also we using DevOps to uh, Azure DevOps to push our code to the Azure automation. And at the end, we connecting the Power Automate to Azure automation. So in this scenario, we have an organization that use a very old system that generating users and uh, storing them in a local disk drive uh, as a CSV file. So we need to sync that CSV file into our Azure directory. And based on that CSV file, we have to create users in uh, our Azure directory. So here we have different uh, items. And in the demo, I'm going to cover all of these uh, items in the diagrams. So here, first off first, we have to create hybrid worker groups. So here I'm going to create a hybrid group with specific name and I use default credential. And if I add machines, I can see my VMs on Azure and also the VM that I actually uh, onboarded by Azure Arc. So as you can see, it's connected and it's uh, <clears throat> accessible from the from Azure uh, environment. So I select the Azure Arc VM. And now we are going to create this connection. In the background, uh, we already have the connection to the VM, but we need to have the Azure hybrid worker extension on the VM. So uh, this process, is a kind of creation uh, of the extension on on-premise VM in uh, my backend system. So when it's ready, we need to create a source controller connection here. So in the source controller, I'm going to add a new one. So I named the source controller for myself and select the type of the source controller I selected uh, Azure DevOps authentication, and now it's authenticated to the Azure DevOps. So I can see my repository and the branch that I have. And also I enable the auto sync. So every time that I push the updates, the auto syncs will update the uh, run book that I have in the atom automation. So here, as you can see, the source controller has been added. And I have this simple code. So since I already have that uh, shared resources for the credential and authentication, so I add that part. And also I have a file in the on-premise machine uh, in C drive, uh, demo app folder, which is a CSV file, includes a user's name and information. And by this script, I fetch that CSV file on on-premise VM and uh, create the users based on CSV file in the Azure auto in the Azure directory. So as you can see, it's a simple one getting the CSV file and for each file creating user and then return. So I'm going to push my code to uh, Azure DevOps repository that I have. and then push to original. So as soon as I push the file for the first time, it's not going to sync. So we need to basically sync it manually for the first time. And when I sync, it's the start to getting information from repository as, a, as you can see, it's queued now. So there, there is difference between full and incremental. So full means this is the new code that's going to push. As you can see, it's application, demo application.ps1. 
and some files. And if I go to Runbooks, I can see the demo application that has been added here to Runbooks. And if I check the code, I can see it's the same code that I have for the uh, in, inside the repository codes. So here I have another things in Power Automate. So as you can see, Power Automate does support built-in action for logic apps, sorry, automation account. So you can easily call that uh, function uh, automation account into uh, Power Automate, and you can use uh, your run book to run or get the job status or content easily. So as you can see, I have an action called create job and the other to get job with uh, some information like uh, waiting for a job or which uh, subscription. I'm going to run the code uh, or flow manually. And now the automation is working. If I back to Runbook and check the jobs, I can see already a job is starting. And now it's running. And after a while, it will be completed. So I can see some outputs here, but if we back to uh, Power Automate and after a while, we can see, OK, we have the content. So basically, we can easily call uh, code in on-premise by Azure Hybrid Worker Group. And uh, we, we get some information from on-premise. Uh, and by Azure Automation Connection to Azure Arc and on-premise, we use the code, run the code, push the code into the VM, get some information, and then the information back to went back to Azure Automation and Power Automate use that content to uh, show to us. After that, so we can easily create a different method to use that information, or if you want to call the other system or integrate it to other systems. So. Some security best practices. So uh, you can use the, uh, I, basically these are kind of recommendation from Microsoft and also some experience that I have in Azure Automation and Azure Automation Runbook. So use principle for uh, with at uh, least privilege when you're granting access. Uh, please don't forget to configure the role-based access control on Runbooks when you want to define different uh, automation account. Uh, when you use a uh, hybrid workers VM extension, uh, that should be doesn't have any dependency on, uh, on the like analytics agents. And use high privilege uh, users or hybrid worker custom rules for uh, users and uh, for different operations. Also, uh, this one is a good one because Microsoft recently announced that they are going to deprecate run as account. So if you already have any automation which works with uh, run as account, please, uh, you have to uh, basically move it from run as account to manage identity, which is very, very safer than the run as accounts. And also uh, use shared resources for credential certification. Uh, do not expose your uh, credential information or critical information uh, to the code. And also, if you have a kind of uh, secure environment, I really recommend that to use private link and uh, security connected to the hybrid runbook uh, instead of having public endpoint. So those are the security best practices that you can follow. And it's really, really uh, important that you uh, use that. So uh, end of presentation. Oh, OK. This slide is not the correct one. This one is better, I guess. So yeah, that's all. Hope uh, you get some information and knowledge and get some concepts about the Azure automation and the systems and the features that you can use and use this uh, service for your environment and make some 
automation for your uh, organization and use it in a perfect way. So please let me know any questions. Okay, let me show. Okay, yes, thank you so much, uh, Said, for the great uh, presentation. I really like that you, you, you were speaking while you were like uh, playing your uh, demo. So it's really like <laughs> you will prepare it uh, for the demo itself. We don't have any question from the audience. Uh, let me see. Ah, we don't have a question, but someone said uh, hi from Alan uh, Strand. Okay. Uh, so he said hi, but I do have one question. Uh, okay. I actually have more than one, but I'm saving the rest for <laughs> for the next one. But I just want to ask uh, you one question before uh, we finalize the session and do our af after session uh, FICA via Zoom. One question that I have is if I'm someone who is new or beginner uh, and I want to learn about Azure Automation, Mm -hmm. How would I get started? Because I know Azure, Azure Automation is a big, like it's a category in Azure uh, Azure world. Yeah. Uh, this one is just one part of it. Uh, what's yeah. your advice to those that uh, are beginners? Yeah. So uh, if you check Microsoft documentation Azure, uh, about the Azure Automation, you can easily find that uh, it's not only one action, it's not only one subject about the Azure Automation, and there are many different aspects of the Azure Automation. So uh, I, from basically, that the, the way that I learned the Azure Automation is uh, I spend my time for each different uh, items of the Azure Automation separately. The main reason of that is when you using Azure Automation, like for DevOps, it's a different story than, you know, for the uh, DSC, like desired uh, configuration. So uh, it's, it's really important if they want to create a kind of process automation. First of all, I really, really recommend that they start learning about uh, Azure Well Architect framework because it talks uh, about the all of aspects of the uh, architect of the uh, cloud system. And plus, if you check the automation part, you can see a lot of information uh, regarding the uh, exactly the automation part of the uh, Well Architect framework. And other than that, uh, they can find uh, some links regarding the uh, learning path. It's not like a huge learning path for the Azure Automation. It's part of some other learning path. For example, DevOps part is related to AZ400 uh, exam, uh, which is really cool. So they can use that resources to learn about uh, Azure Automation more. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Said. How about you, Hawken? How did you find yeah. the session? Yeah, I thought it was a really great, great yeah. session. It was uh, gave a great insight because this is quite a big topic. Mm, yeah, it is. is. Mm. But I, I also had a question. Um, maybe you can say something general about cost, because you know sometimes you know you have some so a free tier, or maybe you have a number of calls that are free. Uh, can say something about this. Yeah. So. Uh, Azure Automation, when you use Azure Sandbox, it's not that much expensive, basically, because you're using the shared resources. But in some cases, the fail shared is, you know, uh, some problem that you have. But if you want to use Azure Hybrid Worker, of course, you need to have a VM active behind that. But if you want to use Azure Hybrid Worker with Azure Arc enabled server, it's a different story because for each call that you have in Azure Automation, you have to you know, uh, pay a bit more. So basically, uh, Azure Automation with Azure uh, Sandbox, it's, it's a good solution to having you know, normal automation in your environment with uh, low cost. But if you use, uh, you know, huge automation for the Azure automation, yes, you have to pay a bit more about that. Well, while you were sharing your uh, answer, I also uh, saw here on the pricing 
that uh, there are actually under a pricing calculator, which uh, we use to check. Uh, I do see here that uh, there are some, like, for example, process automation. There's like free 500 minutes. Yeah. And in terms of configuration management, uh, there are also free for Azure node. But then if yeah. it's non-Azure node, then you have to pay about 60 kroner, crowns yeah. per node and other stuff. So uh, I think uh, our audience or learners can refer to the pricing calculators as well if there is something that is free uh, in yeah. included mm -hmm. in the subscription. Yeah, I, yes. I, I can say it's a kind of cheap solution if you want to start to automate your process in uh, your organization. It's the best solution. Uh, I have very much experience in this regard. I, I can say I have created more than 20 uh, automations based on Azure automations in you know small to higher scales. So it's it's a really good solution. Yes. I think we have a question <laughs> that came in just now. Should we show a token? Let's see. Uh, here. We have a question from Audrey. Thank you for the presentation. Under what circumstances should a company consider using this service? Uh, they, uh, she can check the uh, basically the use cases, but based on my experience, when you want to create a kind of integration that you need to create connection between different services in the Azure, it's the amazing solution. For example, the demo that I've showed to you is connection between Azure Automation and Power Automate. So one of the examples that I can give to you, it's a kind of connection that I've created between an old HR system to Azure to be synced between the old HR and the Azure I directory. So it's basically uh, a solution that you can create a different scenarios in the automation idea, you know? So uh, it's, it's really depends of the I cannot say that you can use it like an API connection to call or get information because it's not possible, but I would say that it's a good solution that you can define different way of the automation to integrate it with the other systems. Yeah, that's great. I see that you got a reminder there. <laughs> no problem. Yes, uh, we got our the 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 session coming also for uh, the the Vika thing. Yes, that's uh, that's really great. Thank you, Audrey, for asking that question. I do have actually a few of uh, reserved for our uh, Fika, but thank you so much, Said, for sharing your knowledge. I know that. Uh, this is your one of your few uh, public speaking virtually so i'm very happy you did share that uh and uh if our audience or community members want to reach out to you or ask more questions is how can they reach out to you or connect with you yeah basically i'm super active on linkedin so if they send message to me normally i'll uh, reply to them immediately but of course, Twitter and my website, mctsection.com, they can reach to me and ask questions if they have any. Yes, I did take a pic yesterday on your uh, website, the blog that you're still trying to build. I really like uh, the code about learning there. So yeah. if you're curious what that code is, visit <laughs> Asai's yeah. website, which is in our meetup uh, community uh, details. Yes, hi. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks again for the opportunity that you had me here. And it was really fun to share knowledge with others. And uh, as I saying every time, every day, never stop learning. You can see this motto in my website too. So yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh Hokan, go ahead. No, yes, the VS also got the one more comment here from Ori. She was uh, yeah. just thanking you for. Yes. Mm. 
Yes, Thank and I also, well. yeah, please, uh, I, I also shared uh, this link, so bit.ly link, Asher, Asug Sweden, on, uh, slash Afrika, and then today's uh, date in that uh, format. So feel free to join us for a short uh, mingle uh, yeah, after the session. But otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much from, from us, and I hope you have a great rest of uh, the weekend and Easter, uh, like, in a great weather <laughs> and yeah. fun with your your family and i appreciate all your time and share it with your friends this is recorded yes sure. this summer Bye -bye. <laughs> this summer <laughs> <laughs> uh, see you later see you later